Welcome back, third grade friends. We are thinking right now about making our story quilt and um, how we're going to start by that, uh, start by doing that actually is coming up with the story. So it's really any story, um, could be real or imaginary. When Faith Ringhold uh, shared her story with you, it was sort of a childhood memory mixed with a dream that she had. And so um, it was real and imaginary at the same time. You could do real and imaginary, a story from real life, or something simply just imaginary, something uh, that's exciting to you. And um, I'd like you to be able to tell on your piece of paper here, in your story, kind of like a beginning and a middle and an end, which might seem co kind of complicated, uh, but I, th I think it's pretty easy to do once you get started, actually. My third graders are really creative. Um, I'd like you to find any kind of size paper that you have at your house, and it could be any kind of paper as long as it's white. Um, Mrs. Samala always uses, uses drawing paper in her classroom, and um, it's a little thicker weight, and so I'm going to do watercolor on mine and colored pencil and marker. So three things, watercolor, colored pencil, marker. With that, my thicker drawing paper works the best, but um, computer paper can even work. Um, make any kind of edge that you want. This is a ruler that I have that's kind of wider than an average, like a regular ruler. My paper is a little bit bigger for the demonstration. So I'm going to line up my ruler on the bottom of the paper very carefully, making sure that it doesn't look like this or doesn't look like this, but that that ruler is lined up right on the white part of my paper and then I'm going to draw a line and this is going to become my border because I will create a quilt border eventually. Do the same thing on this side and do the same thing on this side and then do the same thing on the last. Oops, excuse me, you don't want to do that on the last side. Good thing that Mrs. Samla knows how to use an eraser really, really well. So when I hold, I like to hold my ruler down hard with two fingers, I spread my fingers apart. If I hold it like this, then my ruler can switch as I push, it moves around. But if I spread my fingers like this and push down hard and then come down, it's a lot easier for me to, um, to handle. Or I also like having a friend. When I was your age, I totally would have a friend that would help me out um, if I could. Um, now my next step is, now my paper just got smaller, which seems a little less scary to me, and I like when there's lines on my paper right away that I don't feel as big and afraid of as my big white sheet of paper here. And what I want to do is create my story. My story is going to happen on a beach. I kind of feel like being on a beach these days. Um, maybe with family or friends. And you're just going to go ahead and draw out your story the way that you want it to look with a pencil. What I would challenge you to do in your story is to create as many details and tell us as much stuff about the place that you're in as possible. And then we can learn more about you. So I'm gonna put palm trees on my beach so you can definitely tell where they are. And I'm, I'm not gonna draw a ton on here um, because I actually want you to get started on your artwork. So. You don't have to watch me draw the whole time. So there's the beginning of my of my palm tree. However, it's looking a little sad there, right? I don't look like it doesn't look like it's quite done. Um, maybe I'd want to have some big clouds in my sky going by. Um, I'd start off with a couple, bigger, smaller. I'm on a beach, so I better draw in some water. And maybe in the background, there's a boat coming in, and I want to be sitting on my fancy lawn chair on the beach and I can think about my people. I For this assignment I kind of like to draw in cartoon people. Um, you can draw your people in any way you want to. Maybe there's a cool beach umbrella happening here. I have to decide what that looks like and start filling in with more and more information and more details. And that's all I want you to do right now for the drawing. When you get done filling up your drawing, and obviously I'm not done filling up my drawing right now, I, you can tell that I have a place, it's kind of a time of day, I'm thinking blue sky day, that kind of thing. Now when we go to add our color, that's when you're going to tell a little bit more about the detail. When you go to color in your shapes on here when you're done drawing, please remember that um, you want to layer colors, especially if you only have eight colors at home. So instead of just painting my sky blue and my water blue, 
because I only maybe have eight colors at my house, maybe I'm going to press lightly and make my sky a light blue, and then I'll press a little bit harder in the waves, and maybe I'll even mix it with a little green so it looks like a bluish green, like a turquoise beach water. Maybe over here in my palm leaves, I want them to look fresh, so I'll color them in with greens and yellows. You want to think about those ideas. So maybe putting colors on top of the colors. You, if you're using crayon, that would be exciting. If you're using colored pencil, colors on top of colors would be very exciting. If you have markers, go, go ahead. Hopefully you have quite a few colors. Th those are a little bit harder to layer and mix with. If you have watercolors, um, what I like to do is do my small details with my colored pencil and then I like to do my big areas like my sky and my water and my beach with my watercolor. Um, in the end, let me just show you where I went, so you, where I started from and where I got to. I remember when I show you this, all I want you to do is the middle part today. We're not worried about the outside at all because there's different rules for that. But here's one that I was working on. So that was my beginning, my drawing over here. And once I got all my details drawn out, then I used my watercolor to color in my big areas. And I came back with a colored pencil and I colored in the smaller areas because coloring in small areas with watercolor is hard, especially if you have a big brush at home. To try to color this little skinny chair and this blanket with watercolor would have been hard. So I did that with my colored pencil. And you could do that with any tools. And then when I got done coloring, I realized, uh-oh, you can't see my pencil lines anymore. So I took a marker once everything was dry and I outlined my pencil lines again and pop, all of my shapes came back which I loved, and now you can tell about my story, right? So this we'll talk about in a different class period. Uh, for right now, I just want you to focus on your story in the middle, and if you don't get all of it colored in in this class period, it doesn't matter. We can worry about that later, but at least start with your story. All right, friends? Thank you for sharing your time with me, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Mm -hmm.